aqua friends welcome to my channel my name is Nicole Cordemarche so we're going to be doing this rabbit today and the brushes that I'm going to use uh, we're going to do wet on wet for most of the painting so I have a one and a half Princeton brush here and then to lay down the big amounts of color I have the number 12 black velvet and I also have an eight and a six or I also use a four uh, to do the hair I just have a flat brush for lifting, a very small detail brush for the eyes and the very small areas. And then of course I have my liner, my script liner brush for getting in some textures of the grass and some of his little whiskers. So the colors I was thinking about using for the rabbit is uh, raw umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and sepia. And then I also have Van Dyke brown and some neutral tint. Now for some of these warmer areas and fleshy tones, I mix uh, my Quinn Scarlet with my Raw Ombre to get this kind of fleshy tone, as well as you can also use the Burnt Sienna. That, that works really good for fleshy tones. When it comes to the grass, definitely uh, Leaf Green and Sap Green are my go-to colors. And then for some of the deeper shadow colors, very dark, I have the Shadow Green and then the Brilliant more vibrant foliage hookers green and permanent green an interesting fact about this is the fun fact moment guys sap green was originally from the berries of the buckhorn plant and they extracted the color and they reduced it to a real thick syrup and they actually sold it in animal bladders and it became known as bladder green <laughs> so that's the fun fact of the day for you <laughs> The reference photo that I got from Pixabay is very vibrant and the background and foreground are blurry. So we're going to do most of this wet on wet. It's only the rabbit that is in focus. So I'm wetting the paper really well going back over around uh, the bunny. You do not want to get the rabbit wet. And then I'm laying down my lightest colors first. I used sap green and leaf green to start off to get this underpainting of these main warm colors in. And then I'm coming in with various other greens like hooker's green. I also used some burnt ombre, emerald green, and some shadow green for the really, really dark areas. There's also a lot of white areas that I am leaving some white of the paper, as you can see. So while my paper is still wet, I'm getting it as saturated as I can before I have to let it dry. So coming in with that darker shadow green and putting those colors in as well. There is some warm burnt siennas that I see in the background, so I'm dropping that in as well. I am using a tissue paper to pull up some white spots for these flowers that are blurred in the foreground. And we're going to let that whole thing dry. Now for my second layer, the background needs to be a lot more vibrant. So I'm just re-wetting everything and reapplying the same pigments in the same way. I did mask out a few pieces of grass around the bunny as well as the flower in his mouth before I started painting. So I am trying to go as dark as I can for that horizon line where the woods are. And coming in with a little bit more of those vibrant leaf sap green colors in the foreground. Mm -hmm. 
So once that dries, I'm starting on the bunny rabbit and there's gonna be a lot of layers on him. Putting in a little bit of the blue that I see and a little bit of brown on the bottom. And then I'm just going right into wetting the bunny rabbit to put in the underpainting. So I paint in a realistic style, but you wanna look at the animal you're painting and decide on a color that you could use as an underpainting that kind of represents the overall color of the animal. So this is a combination of burnt sienna and burnt ombre to get a really nice rich brown. So I'm just kind of adding these darker areas where I see them on the reference photo and everything is just very nice and soft. So where I'm seeing the darker browns, I'm adding that to his fur as well. So getting as much of that undercolor in as possible before I let the whole thing dry. I'm adding some texture with my brush so that it's wet on wet, fine brush strokes. And then for the ears, I'm adding in a very uh, warm, sort of corally skin color. And outlining around those dark areas like in the reference photo. And I'm lifting some lighter areas on the ear. Rewetting his face so that I could put in the darker tones on his fur. I think I might have also had Van Dyke Brown in my palette. But I'm really leaning towards using Burnt Ombre a lot more than the Van Dyke Brown because it's a lot more of a warmer brown and I really like it. It's a richer color. So you're always looking at the reference photo and you're dropping in these colors these blocks of colors where they need to go. Where you have a little bit more of a burnt sienna color, you want to add a little bit more of that. So once the whole thing dries, now I'm re-wetting and putting a glaze of some raw umber on his fur, on his face, to, to warm him up a bit more. There's going to be a lot of layers that we're going to do. And so right now I'm just kind of sticking to his face. And now comes the task of putting in all these tiny little lines. I am using a very fine tip number four brush. And you're drawing in the fur is basically how you get this realism. The rabbit itself took me about an hour and a half to do. So it's not a fast type of painting, but it's very rewarding to get this level of realism in your final product. So pretty much like I said, I, I have to build up the colors because if you zoom in on the reference photo, he's made up of white fur and brown fur and like the dark, almost uh, black areas. There's grays, there's browns, there's light tan colors. So to get all these multi colors, we have to build up these layers of multicolors. So once I'm done with the brown, I'm coming in with a little bit of a darker mixture of a sepia, and I'm building up those values. So wherever I see these flecks of this dark brown black color I'm filling that in so this is gonna be that stage that ugly stage where you think it's not gonna work out 
but keep in mind that you have many more layers to do and each layer builds upon itself. So I'm getting that eye in there, putting those dark colors in. Going back to the burnt sienna and getting him really nice and dark with that nice dark orange color around the scruff of his neck. He's very orange there. And so I am taking a very thick mixture of watercolor paint to get those colors in there. I would say my consistency is like, you know, half and half. It's like as kind of creamy as I could get it. And then bringing that color all the way down his back, all these little brush strokes. His back is what's really multicolored. So you have to go over it with the burnt sienna and then some of the sepia. And then I had some of the white and some of the black. And so that, you, that there's a lot of layers involved. And where he's a little more red, that's where you're going to put a little bit more of the burnt sienna. You just follow your reference photo. Where he's got some more dark areas, I'm going back up to the face. So it's, it's a constant balancing of your tonal values. Okay, he needs to be a little bit more darker here. He's got some more shadows under, you know, some tufts of hair here. And so just keep looking and seeing where you need to add these colors. He's going to look kind of weird and really disconnected right now because I haven't done the white yet. But he's getting there. He's starting to come out of the ugly stage. I like this Princeton Black Velvet series brush, this number four. It is a really good quality brush that has a very fine tip and the belly of the brush holds a lot of water. So you're able to paint a lot of strokes before you have to reload your brush. So now I'm coming in with my PH Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. and getting all the white parts of his hair. And you always want to paint in the direction the fur goes to get a very realistic effect. Working on his tiny nose. <laughs> so I'm putting a second layer of this fleshy tone on his ear. And I used quinacridone and Scarlet mixed with some of my burnt sienna to get this color. So now I'm working on the details of his ear and I'm getting in those shadows, those veins even with some of my Quinn Scarlet. Don't want them too in your face so I kind of blotted it there but it um, does add to the realism. Now his ears have this darker fur on, around it and then everything is kind of trimmed with, with white and so um, I'm going to be working on getting those white tips on the ends of his ears. It's also helping to bring him more f in the foreground, kind of getting him to pop against that background. Just a few more details on his eye. 
His eye has a little bit of a fleshy color around the whole eye. And so that little final touch of me adding in the flesh tone, it really makes a difference. Kind of puts it in a socket, you know, where it was just kind of hanging there before. So he is looking pretty good. I am now getting rid of the masking fluid so that I could paint in those last little pieces of grass and the flower in his mouth. I'm using the same colors that I've used in the painting for um, the flower with some quinacridone scarlet for the pink areas, uh, sap green, leaf green, a little bit of browns for the stem. Adding these final little touches, his whiskers. Putting in those grass blades. And then to blend that out, I just kind of wet the ends there to, to blend it out with the rest of the foreground because I want that to remain blurry, just like the reference photo, and just have that rabbit really nice and sharp. And sign your painting. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, I appreciate your feedback. I love to hear from you and I love your support. Um, you're what keeps me going. So I really appreciate everything. See you next week.